All right, welcome back. I'm Father Jedediah Tridel, and today we're going to do the first part of the Liturgy of the Eucharist, the second main part of the Mass. And the, the first part of the Liturgy of the Eucharist is called the Offertory. Uh, now, usually, I mean, especially on Sundays, but even during daily Mass, we would begin the Offertory with uh, the prayers of the faithful, which are also called the, the universal uh, petitions or the bidding prayers, which is just when we bring our petitions to the Lord and pray as a community. So that's usually how that starts. And that uh, comes from like way back in the Roman church, they would have uh, these petitions. They were kind of suppressed very early on. Uh, I think by the six or seven hundreds, and then they kind of came back in the 1969 revision of the missiles. So we start with the universal prayers, or the, the petitions, and then we get into like the offertory proper. And really the offertory, it's kind of in the name, offer or sacrifice, right? The, offer, the offertory is when we prepare the altar, prepare the gifts, and prepare to enter into the sacrifice part of the Mass. So we're just going to go over those few parts that would be in the offertory. So going back to some of the earliest liturgical documents we have. So St. Justin Martyr and some of the saints like that, uh, they talk about that the, uh, the offertory was kind of a simple affair. Uh, there was a small procession where we have a, we have a, uh, a document from I think the seventh or eighth century that uh, talks about the Pope going down and receiving bread and wine from the nobles who are gathered. So uh, uh, in other places, it was like a small procession. Uh, in many parishes, you know, there's a small procession of the bread and wine up to the altar, and they would give it to the deacon or the priest if there's not a deacon. And really, it's just showing that it's this is something coming from the community being given to the priest to now be sanctified or to be consecrated. So the offertory is all about setting something apart for sacred use. And so it's, it starts as bread and wine, and it's now going to the altar to be consecrated into, of course, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the offertory. So the next thing we do is we set the altar. And there's a few different parts. You've probably seen it every, every Mass you've ever been to, but maybe you don't know uh, kind of all the parts of it. So the first thing that would be prepared is the chalice. And, uh, of course, the server by now has already brought the... Uh, the Roman Missal, it's got all the prayers in it, over to the altar. So then the chalice. And we, we usually veil our chalices. It's, uh, it's optional now in the Roman Missal, but it's, it's still considered a praiseworthy custom. That's the language used. And you veil something that is preparing, that is for sacred use, right? You said you, you veil something that is uh, beautiful, sacred, and life-giving. And the, uh, the sacred vessels that will hold, uh, particularly the blood of Christ, the chalice, is veiled because of its sacred use. So it just adds a little extra solemnity to it and says these aren't just ordinary uh, cups and plates. You know, I hate when people talk about like, oh yeah, you gotta, gotta go back to the sacristy and, and wash the dishes. We're not washing dishes. These are sacred vessels for sacred things. And so we show that something's sacred by emphasizing it, and we emphasize the chalice and paten by veiling it. So the first part is a little piece of square cloth called a corporal, and it's in the name corpus, which means body. A corporal is a burial cloth, uh, essentially, and so really this is like a, a, the cloth, it's supposed to be a cloth, like a cloth that prepares uh, for the burial of Christ, kind of in the way of like the Shroud of Turin, that kind of thing. So this is where the body of Christ will be. This protects the altar. It just adds an extra layer of uh, sacrality and uh, just protection to the, to the altar, because now this is a place where something very sacred is going to be laying. And so it's sort of a, sort of a burial cloth, kind of cool idea. All right, so then we unveil the chalice, and we have what is called a pall, and where else do you see a pall? At a funeral. It's the cloth that goes over the casket. So again, it's, this is bringing us back to the passion and death of Christ in the sacrifice of the Mass, so something to cover the casket in a way. Uh, so I normally get set aside. And then there would be a, a small offering prayer of the, pa uh, what, of the altar bread, so the unconsecrated host, which is on a thing called a paten, which is a Latin word for paten. I don't know what the English word is for paten. Uh, it's a paten. And the, uh, the altar bread. And so there's a prayer that's, uh, that's prayed, and I will pray that. So the blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And so now that altar bread, and if there's another ciborium with more unconsecrated hosts, that comes over to the corporal. So now this has been set aside for sacred use in the liturgy of the Eucharist. And then we do a similar thing with the chalice, right? So uh, we'd go over to the side of the altar, the right side of the altar, the server would come up, bring wine and water. Uh, there would be wine poured into the chalice. 
there would be water mixed in with the wine. And there's a prayer that's prayed by the mystery of this water and wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And so that mixture of wine and water reminds us of the humanity and divinity in Christ. It also reminds us at the cross when the soldier pierced his side, what came out blood and water. And so wine and water is mixed in the chalice uh, where it will be consecrated. So then there's another, there's a similar prayer prayed with the chalice. The chalice is set down. The pall is put on top of the chalice, and we've got a little handy-dandy purificator. So that is to, uh, if any of the precious blood spills, there's something to uh, purify it. Uh, if there's like a particularly large particle of the Eucharist on my fingers, it's there to purify my fingers. And it's just there as a uh, handy-dandy purificator for the whole liturgy of the Eucharist. And that's kind of the offertory in a nutshell. And then uh, there would be a prayer prayed called the prayer over the offerings. And so it's sort of like the collect. Remember we talked about the opening prayer. There is the post-communion, so the prayer that's prayed after communion. And then the, uh, the middle one of those prayers is called the prayer over the offerings. Uh, it used to be called the secret, but usually uh, that would be after the uh, pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. You all respond, may the Lord receive the sacrifice at your hands. And then there would be the prayer over the offerings. And so that's sort of the, the end of the offertory. So then at that point, then we would go into the preface. All right, so that's really what the offertory is all about. It's about taking something natural, something human, bread and wine, uh, and giving it to the Lord by giving it to his minister at the altar, and then setting it aside for sacred use. So now these, this ordinary bread and wine, these ordinary vessels are now set apart for something very sacred, really the most sacred thing we do as Christians. And to conclude this video, uh, I want to show you the, uh, in the high Middle Ages, so 11th or 12th century, uh, the Roman offertory was much more elaborate than this. And there was a, there was a prayer that was prayed with the, with the paten and bread, then a prayer prayed with the chalice and wine. And uh, it really shows the, uh, the theology of sacrifice in the Mass. And it's, it's very simplified now, so we don't have all these same prayers uh, unless someone's celebrating the, the extraordinary form of the Mass or the, the Latin Mass. Uh, but I want to pray that prayer just to, uh, uh, just to let you hear it, because it really shows what the Mass is, you know, that this, it's the sacrifice. So it would start with the, the priest would take the paten, and instead of that, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation prayer, he would say, receive, O Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, this spotless host, which I, your unworthy servant, offer to you, my living and true God, for my innumerable sins, offenses, and negligences, and for all here present, and also for all the faithful Christians, both living and dead, that it may profit me and them for salvation unto life everlasting. Amen. And then he would say, We offer you, O Lord, the chalice of salvation, pleading your clemency or mercy, that it may ascend in the sight of your divine majesty with a sweet fragrance for our salvation and for that of the whole world. Amen. So it's a little bit more elaborate. The prayers are a little bit longer, but it really shows that these things are being set apart for the holy sacrifice. So that's what the offertory is in a nutshell. Ordinary things being set apart for extraordinary things. And just something to think about, what do we do with the offertory? Uh, if one is not the priest celebrating the Mass, uh, place your own petitions on the altar. This is also an opportunity to really offer yourself. You know, put your, place your sins on the altar, place the graces on the altar, the things you're thankful for, uh, you know, the things you're praying for, your own petitions, your own sacrifice of self. Place that kind of spiritually on the altar. So it, the offertory is an opportunity to enter into uh, the liturgy of the Eucharist in a prayerful way. So enter into it in a prayerful way. Give to the Lord what you want to offer to Him during this time and uh, make an offering of yourself. So uh, we'll see you back next time for the liturgy of the Eucharist.